Oh, it's definitely cold enough in here to make ice. This was water last night. Um, so I've moved my worm food back into the freezer. <laughs> Although technically the whole refrigerator as a whole isn't really working properly now. That little fan that's behind there that's supposed to push a lot of this cold air down, it's, uh, it's not coming on. So the lower area over here, I had the thermometer in here all night. It, it never, I believe, let's see, where is it? Oh, there it is. Yeah, I think it got down to about 60. Not quite cold enough to keep food fresh. So I do have a whole bunch of stuff that needs to be given to the worms. Not only the old stuff that's been in storage and thawed and refrozen now, but a whole bunch of stuff that's never been frozen yet, uh, which might just get fed to the worms as is, rather than going through the extra step of freezing. Or maybe I'll use up some of the frozen stuff too, but yep, my um, refrigerator saga continues. Welcome, I'm out here in my yard, and what you see here in front of us is my outdoor compost barrel that I make reference to on occasion as well as my outdoor worm bag. The outdoor worm bag is now 28 days of age. It's been around for four weeks. And there was one video made of me feeding it, I believe. But in my record keeping, it already shows that I fed it three times. And usually it's just me coming out here with a little bit of stuff that just needs to be disposed of, one, two, three, and I give it to the worms. And I record it in my spreadsheet as having been fed, all good to go. And that means we so far don't have a whole lot of information about that bin. There was the initial launch of the bin, at which point I think I got an estimated worm count of something like 1,831. That's taking everyone's guesses at how many worms there were in there and averaging them. So that's 1,831, I believe, something in that neighborhood. But my uh, objective today was to try to alter that number and bring it up. So before going in there to Give it some, you know, some bedding, some grit, some coffee, and some frozen stuff from the um, refrigerator. I'm also equipped with this little box right here, as well as a number of empty pots that I could use because I'm going to go for some more recruits today. I'm going to see how many worms I can get out of there today. I usually use the limit of this box as my capacity to go by, or sometimes not even that much. Since I've got a lot of stuff composting in here already, I need to begin with emptying out some of the contents of this to give us access to the lower areas where the worms are. So let me get some of that taken care of here. So underneath this piece of plywood and underneath these pieces of paper is where you find all my stuff composting. And these layers of paper are often a place where you would find um, different things. Here we've got a pretty good sized spider but what I was um, expecting to see really was some black soldier fly larvae kind of coming up to that top surface to get away from where all the feeding and action is happening so that they could uh, you know kind of get out of the eating mode and get into the pupation mode so here's stuff like uh, who knows everything anything you could think of right so I need to get all this stuff out of our way I'm just going to pick away at it and get as much of it out of our way as I could. Oh, trying to limit how much I drop on the ground. <laughs> All right, what a mess. All right, not a big deal. We'll just get a couple of these pots filled up with stuff like this, and we'll be good to go. I thought about going with a third pot full of stuff removed, but I think this should do. As we start to look around in here, there's all kinds of stuff in here crawling around. Worms are probably a little lower, but some of the things we're seeing are the, uh, the larvae of the black soldier fly, the dark colored ones coming up to pupate. The ones that are still young and active and feeding are probably down lower. They're lighter in color sure we'll hit a batch of some sort of food that they're all over this stuff is very dark and damp and I 
I'm wondering where we're going to find worms. Definitely finding all kinds of things down in here. Lots of little worms all over the place. Usually a handful like this would be considered as a good, suitable fetch. So why don't I get my little box and start into the collecting of our worms. So in here, we should be able to fit a good number of handfuls like that of worms, but I think the ones that were in that last handful in that short period of time while I was, what the heck? <laughs> In a short period of time that I uh, was fetching that little clear plastic container, it's possible that a bunch of the worms that were in that handful that I had in my hand earlier all kind of squirmed down and out of, out of there. So I figured I would reach down and try to start with a fresh handful, not giving them an opportunity to escape. <laughs> it does seem like I shouldn't be trying to be so particular because it's almost impossible to tell what's lurking within any handful of this stuff but every handful does seem to have good numbers of worms in it I don't know was that the first handful that I rejected <laughs> that's usually the sign of me getting into a slow poke mode and just wanting to rummage around and explore so all right, let's see if I can maintain focus here long enough to get the job done in a realistic amount of time. Now, another thing to keep in mind while you're watching here is that I always want to get input from my viewers on how many worms they think we released at any given time in any given video. And admittedly, I give a much better view of the worms sometimes when I'm going from, say, for example, a, a finished worm bin migrating a bunch of worms that are clearly visible here. What we're trying to estimate is the number of worms in a fairly um, hard to estimate scenario. Hard to see what we're really trying to measure. I'm wondering if maybe I'm just going too deep now. Maybe I can actually find worms at shallower depths perhaps around the outer edge. Let's see how we can do out there. Maybe we'll end up finding that that's the way to go. And it seems like that is the case. It seems like that handful had quite a bit more worms in it than a lot of the previous ones. So maybe the outer edges of the bin are the place to be. I guess that makes sense, right? Because when it does rain, the coverings that I've got on here, they, uh, kind of force all the moisture to the edges if there's moisture that's where the worms are going to be not too surprising large chunks of all kinds of stuff in here my guess is that a lot of it could be prunings from when I pruned my garden a few times and threw everything that came of it into here it's um it's also just a bunch of kitchen scraps like you know corn cob husks for one corn cob that husk that you had to peel off and discard certainly takes up a lot of space these past few uh, handfuls look like we're pulling out a good number of worms amongst all these pieces of something <laughs> not sure what these are perhaps pepper plant trimmings or maybe maybe tomato plant trimmings Hard to say and I never I never really feel like I'm putting a big dent into the worm population every time I come in here to recruit worms because it does feel to me like even if I pull out a bucket full of these little guys there's still just so many of them remaining that they'll just continue on with the job but in my bins I really don't think it's the worms doing all the work I think they're just kind of teaming up with some of the other occupants of the container and they're all kind of working at it together so definitely finding some nice batches of worms around the outer edges i'm questioning whether i need to hunt down any more or do we have enough seems like we've collected a good number of them and we are almost full running out of room in this container 
let's go with one more handful and then we'll be done with our recruitment session not bad this might be the best time to just remove that <laughs> label so i'd love to hear everyone's thoughts on how many worms you think we collected here put your numbers um and your guesses down into the comment section that'll be very much appreciated and then i'll do what i usually do i'll average the guesses together and um aggregate them into the total number of estimated number of worms in my outdoor worm bag so let's restore some of the coverings oh i forgot i still got a whole bunch of stuff in buckets i need to turn back into there let's get that done really quick <laughs> Okay, good to go. Get back to work. Love this bin. Almost always so much going on in here. All right, let's get on over to releasing our worms and maybe we'll start with adding the food. Why don't I go grab that now? I'll be right back. So the bag I showed you earlier in the freezer is not very frozen. I guess the freezer could be working better. Feels kind of frozen, but to not totally frozen. You saw the assortment of different stuff in there. And while I was filming a previous segment, I had a quick visitor pull up, never even got out of the car, just kind of handed out a bag of radish leaves and said, see you later. See you later when you come on over for dinner tonight. <laughs> so that was my mom contributing her, uh, I guess, portion to this meal. So it's gonna be a pretty generous feeding. All that coffee, all those frozen bits, and now fresh leaves yum yum all right so let's get to feeding this bin and releasing those worms in here the feedings i've been putting in i think the most recent one maybe five days ago were just like i said earlier little handfuls of scraps of a couple tomatoes or whatever i think these were just bits and pieces of previous feedings um left behind stuff like that mango seed husk so as we start peeling back some of the evidently tomato that they were given last time it's coming back to me now um you can see that they're all coming out in good numbers to see what kind of delicious delicious food's been given to them so we can see that this bin has good numbers of worms in it and since we're giving them a pretty good amount of food here today we should probably excavate a pretty good sized hole to pile it into it feels to me like i might already be at the bottom though okay this is not a very deep container it's a little deceiving because of its diameter it seems so large to me but i do get right to the bottom of it because it, you know it's a pretty young bin still it's only four weeks old so it's got a lot of room to grow lots of uh food to be fed lots of composted materials to be broken down so I've got my little box over here of leaves. So I thought that I would, um, I don't know, do we want to use these leaves? Yeah, might as well, right? Or maybe we'll use them at the end, on top. I like the idea of using leaves. So why don't we start with these freshest items that were just delivered to the worms, going directly into service. No storage required. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Got that distinct radishy odor. So large chunks from before. I guess this must be the filter from some coffee they'd been given previously. Well, guess what? They're getting three more of those today. So we've got maybe that as a good next step. Or do we want to pile this stuff on top? Maybe it's best to put that stuff on top because who knows? I don't want to create a, an environment here that might have a really delicious odor as a result of all these things being piled in here and start attracting all kinds of burrowing creatures <laughs> so maybe it does make good sense for the feeding to be sunken down as low as possible but we're not done yet right we've still got coffee still got leaves but before we do that i'm going to sprinkle in a little bit remains of my collection of pulverized eggshell as you can see it's not much i'm surprised i ran out so abruptly without me noticing <laughs> So looks like I'm gonna have to process some more eggshells soon because that's it, that's all I've got today. So let's see, what do we got to go here? We're gonna give them all that yummy coffee as well as the filters that the coffee came in. 
I'll just pile it right down. And I guess we could uh, maybe even use some of the material around here, some of this existing material to cover up with. Just kind of hoping we might find that mango seed. And get that right down into the area where all the action's gonna be, help it break down. And the rest of it can just kind of get scattered across the top, cover everything up nicely. And what do we do? Do we put the leaves on last, let the little wormies go next? Why don't we do it that way? So my hope is that because of the bright lights out here and on the sides, maybe the worms have kind of gone to the center or down to the bottom because the bottom is gonna become the top. And now we'll get one more last view of how many worms we got going on here. So remember, I'm looking for everyone's input on how many they think they saw. So let's release these little guys and let them get acclimated to their new home. I guess I'm already formulating a, sort of a rough number in my head of how many worms I think I've just released here today. Let's, uh, let's take a look at them. Besides mature worms, do we see any baby worms? I think I see a couple. I'm also curious to see if I might have brought over any cocoons by chance. That'll be kind of nice. And I guess the other thing in here that's, I don't know, some people might consider it as collateral damage or a headache, but I don't mind. Got the black soldier fly larvae. They're abundant. But they'll usually just crawl right out of this stuff and then try to find a, a place in, you know, into which they could place their eggs after they mate that has a, a more abundant food supply than this bin. So I don't see this as being like a, a place that attracts the black soldier flies to lay their eggs. So I don't mind them kind of growing up in here and then flying out of here. My only hope is that they're not um, also <laughs> leaving their eggs inside this bin, making this into a black soldier fly bin as well. Not that it matters. Within a month or two, it's gonna cool off so much that they're not gonna be able to survive much longer anyway. You know, but then they're, uh, but that their pupae go into, or their larva pupae, I don't know what state they're at, but whatever state they're in, they kind of go into a dormant um, kind of hibernation phase and I think many months later they can sort of come back to life and continue their growth until they become a fly. All right, that's my outdoor worm bin at day 28. Everything's looking pretty nice in here. Very castings rich, but we gotta remember how we populate this bin. Every time we bring over worms, we're also bringing over a big mound of stuff that's already partially broken down castings type material. So a little bit of a deceiving um, appearance for a bin that's only four months old because it does look a lot further along than it normally would if it was just a scratch built you know bin out of just paper and leaves and cardboard and stuff um, but still doesn't matter it's a very cool bin lots of room to grow we could probably go double the size of what's in here now so over the next few months we'll do our best to try to fill that bill all right everyone that's it for today hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did please remember to leave me a thumbs up that's always really appreciated and if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.